Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our first impressions of the new albums from Dark Throne, Dr. Acula, Defleshed, and Fit for a King. So it's Halloween weekend and we always come prepared and let's just jump right in to uh, what did you think of the new album from Dark Throne titled Astral Fortress. I thought it was a pretty good album. Uh, from beginning to end, as I say a lot, because I don't really hate anything too bad. But um, there were some things that I thought, you know, were like kind of meh. Um, this band, to me, is a little bit more atmospheric, a little bit more doomy than, you know, traditional black metal, like, say, Mayhem or Immortal or something like that. Um, and there's also something up with the production value on this album. It sounds a lot more old schooly, a lot more raw, a lot more... Uh, demo sounding basement recording as we like to put it sometimes and I noticed that specifically with this one long song they have which was 10 minutes long and I apologize ahead of time I, got, I don't I can't see very well out of this thing so I have to keep moving my mask to, to see my notes I didn't plan this out very well um, the sea beneath the seas of the sea which I think is a really odd sounding track name but it's 10 minutes long and it sounds to me like a stoner jam session or maybe a drunken jam, jam session that they decided to just put on the album, which is not a bad thing, but you get the sense that it's not a polished piece of music. But that kind of sound kind of goes with the territory of, of black metal. So it's not really something that's a bad thing per se. It's just something that when you're listening to it, you're kind of going, ah, oh, what is this? This doesn't sound quite right. But it sounds how it's supposed to sound, so it's, it's it's not really a real criticism, it's just, I don't know, something I'm talking about, I guess, I don't know. Overall, though, the album is alright, some good riffs, um, not very many memorable moments for me on a first listen. Um, we've covered Dark Throne on the channel in the past, and I feel like I had the same kind of feeling with them before, where it kind of just, you know, I can put it on, enjoy it for what it is, but nothing really screams at me or makes me thrilled to listen to it, so... Well, yeah. I mean, it's been a while since we checked out Old Star, which has been a few years um, Old ago. Star, right. So, you know, from what I recall with that, it kind of just staled out as we listened to it. You know, memory's a bit fuzzy, but Dying Star. this <laughs> this album, to me, at first I kind of thought, okay, this is just, you know, the typical Dark Throne, Black Metal kind of stuff. But then I kind of realized, you know what? This album is kind of just a jam. These guys are just jamming. They're vamping on something and going for 10 minutes or for however long. And I, I thought that was interesting because I'm like, you know, you think of old school black metal bands and it's like, you know, you got a constant tremolo and blast beat going for about seven minutes. Yeah. But these guys were just jamming it out. And I, I like that. I like the atmosphere of that. I like that it was more doomy uh, in that regard. And I don't think Old Star was like that, so I kind of like that it's a bit different here. So I, I thought it was neat. Yeah. Alright, what's next? How about The Hell We Create by Fit for a King? Okay, this was interesting to me because we did The Path Yep. on their last album, we reviewed it on this channel, it got two toe tags. So, I mean, toe tag means we love the album, right? Yeah. So I put this album on and I start going... Did I really give this band a toe tag? Because it doesn't sound anything like I would normally enjoy. Okay, it's a lot tamer than what I normally listen to when it comes to metal. So listen to the album. It's got some heavy stuff on it. I'm not gonna, not gonna knock that. It's got some heavy stuff, but I really need to go back and listen to the path and figure out: a is this album heavier than, uh, or is that album heavier than this album, or? Did that album, was that album written so good that it just grew on me over the weekend I ended up loving it even though it wasn't as heavy as I kind of remember it? I believe that was the case with that album. It just album grew on us? Like, it grew, perhaps yeah, a lot. Um, the only song that I really liked that stood out on this first impression was called Eyes Roll Back, which is track number seven. It just hit a lot harder, and I, I just kind of was thinking I wish more of the songs on this album sounded like this. If that was the case, I probably would have liked it a lot more in a first impression. But I'm left kind of underwhelmed and confused because, again, A, it wasn't that heavy, and B, I'm wondering what the path sounded like now. It's been a while since I've listened to it, so I, I really have to revisit it 
and see where my head was at at that time. It's interesting that you have the question about heaviness, because I feel like this album, when it gets heavy, it's heavier than the pack. Yeah, that's I, that. The, right now, that doesn't make sense to me, but maybe you're right. Like, just know. to me, I'm thinking like, wow, they're really throwing down like really hard. I don't. I know there were some really you know hard songs on the path, but like this feels like they're just hitting that wall even harder, and now they're breaking it. Especially with a song like Reaper, that song super duper crazy. One thing that's cool that they do is that the first track fades out on this one note, and then it fades back in with the same note from the second track. Yeah, and I thought that was pretty cool. That know? is cool. Yeah cool little transition there and I find that it works really well with how heavy the heavy parts are on this album in contrast to the lighter parts in the choruses because those who like the heavier stuff can really latch on to those heavy parts and those who like all the melodic sounding stuff can still enjoy the catchy choruses so I think you know it kind of works for everybody that way and it's funny you mentioned Eyes Roll Back the breakdown of that song is cool because it starts on the end of one rhythmically so it's a little bit of a mix up Okay. Uh, on your expectation of what you, how you think it would go naturally. So I thought that was pretty neat. Overall, it was neat. I mean, you know, I would like to listen to The Path again just to kind of get more of a comparison because we did get that Chicho tag, and I remember right. enjoying it, and I'm looking at the track names like, oh, yeah, I remember this and that, but this album, I feel like, just hits it harder. Where it hits harder, not overall, though. Over, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still the same band, right? Like, yeah. it's still going to have, you know, um, metalcore choruses with it like it does that it's just when it hits hard it's harder than before defleshed grind over matter um wasn't quite sure what to expect listening to defleshed i'm not sure if i've ever listened to them before to be honest i was expecting a more i guess modern death metal sound um maybe something similar to like um like benighted or something um but what it sounded like to me was something a little bit more older school which is fine i like it either way um it just felt like a pretty standard death metal album which we say a lot on this channel uh and that doesn't that sounds like maybe a bad thing but it's really not we both like it um track number three one grave to fit them all is a standout track um, this one stood out to me because it kind of had a mixture between um, thrash beats and death metal beats with, you know, D beats switching to blast beats, um, different riffs on top of each beat that kind of complemented the beats. Um, and it was kind of giving you like that cool um, uh, mishmash of, of metal sounds all kind of combined into one track. I thought that was kind of cool. The whole album's got a variety of that stuff anyway, um, but it's just that was a standout track. Track number 10 called Blast Beast was also a standout track. I thought the ripping on this track was really awesome. It actually reminded me of a track by Ex Mortis called Feast of Flesh. Uh, if you listen to both tracks, you'll understand why I find them to be similar. But I like both those songs. I think Feast of Flesh is a great song, and I think Blast Beast, which is also a cool fucking name for a song, to be honest. Um, both of them really cool. Um, but yeah, this album as a whole, uh, beginning and pretty solid. Did I love it? Was I screaming about it? Was I like, oh my god, this is amazing? Well, no, but still thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, you know what? Uh, with this band, from what I've found from listening to them, I haven't really listened to them before, even though I know name, I, I find they're kind of similar to a band like Dying Fetus in, in the regards that it's just like straight up, here's death metal, and it's cool riffs, that's it. No wacky bells and whistles, it's just straightforward to the point with what it presents. And I like that, it's good. If you like death metal, you'll like the album, straight up, simple as that. I also really like Blast Beast, that was a sick song, and that is really kind of a good example of how I feel like this album has a bit of a punk tinge to it, and I really think it comes from those D-beats. I think that yeah, kind of gives sure. it that character, and I think that is also pretty cool that it doesn't sound like a run-of-the-mill death metal album. It actually has something that feels, you know, unique to grab onto. Uh -huh. Maybe not perfectly unique, but something that will be notable compared to other death metal albums. Like this one, oh yeah, this one has the D-beats like that. That's pretty cool. So overall... It was fun. It was enjoyable. It was pretty straightforward to the point, but that's what you get, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. So, Dr. Acula, the self-titled album. Now, this band I've never really heard of before, like, recently. Just seeing that album coming up, like, okay, Dr. Acula, let's see what this is about. And I like that, to me, the sound is, like, post-hardcore. And I love post-hardcore. Bands like Every Time I Die, bands like Secret Band really really cool stuff so i'm glad this is what i got but 
This album is 26 minutes long. It's an LP with 11 tracks, 26 minutes long. It's, this is probably the shortest LP we've ever covered on our channel ever. I agree. Like it, um, it probably is. I, I I listened to this album and I thought it was I thought it was actually pretty good. Like uh, honestly, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It had some pretty unique elements. Maybe not unique, but elements that I liked. Um, such as like there's like this electronic fusion in some of the songs. Um, as you said, it's got this hardcore um, sound. Um, it's just 26 minutes, man. Like that's way too short. If, we're going to review this album through the week. 26 minutes is tough because we put this album on as much as we possibly can. This album's going to get almost twice the amount of plays as a standard album gets. And that's really tough on the album because the more you listen to something, the more chance it is that it's going to get boring or monotonous or you're going to get tired of it, um, which are all synonymous terms, I guess. But... Uh, it's going to be tough for that reason, and honestly, I think that's a huge flaw for an album like this because when I listen to it, I like the way it sounds, and I want more of that sound. And, you know, I'm afraid though, maybe to their credit, if they had made a longer album, it would have just been padding, right? That's potentially a problem too because you get a lot of albums that we, we review on the channel, and maybe we like half the album and the other half is no good, right? So what if we took all the stuff that was no good and then we're left with a 26 minute long album that's good? Maybe this is maybe, that. Maybe, right? yeah. Maybe this is just a really good album with all the padding taken out. Maybe, I don't know. Um, Another thing I really like about this album is how it feels like very complete despite its length. Like you have interludes, you have stuff that really flows together and it feels like a breathing, living kind of package there. Yeah. And I really like how much soul it feels like it has, but I guess that's post-hardcore in general, is that you really feel the energy coming off the music. And I like that. Yeah, a couple couple tracks that stood out. Um, track number eight, Stay Out of the Basement. Um, just thought it was a rad tune. Um, the, the intro is what caught my attention. Just this cool rhythmic pattern on the bass drum. Nothing too spectacular, but it just sounds good. And on the last track of the album, The Barking Ghost, featuring Kyle Medina from Body Snatcher, um, this song starts off kind of doomy sounding, and then it turns into like a hardcore song. So you get you get some pretty cool, unique stuff in there, because it's like, at its core, it's, I guess, deathcore, but you got this electronic fusion in some of it, and you got this hardcore element, and you got this doomy element, and they're all kind of, you know, fit in at good spots. I don't know how to word it, but... Uh, I enjoyed it, man. I just hate the fact it's so short. It really, it really puts a damper on it. But um, well, as for what to cover for this week, I mean, you know, I, I feel like it might be worth scratching Dark Throne or Fit for a King off the list because we have already covered, covered them before. Before, so it's really between Deep Flesh and Doctor Acula, and I feel like with Deep Flesh. It's pretty straightforward with what it is. Maybe there are gems in there. There might be some gems. But if you look at Dr. Acula, I mean, we both enjoyed that quite a bit, but it is the test. It's an ultimate test because it's 26 minutes long. I think let's do the test, man. Let's see Let's see if a 26-minute long record can make it through a week with the strenuous amount of listening we do and not get boring. Let's see if it can do it. And if, it, if it can accomplish that, then that's just quite the impressive album because it's very short and fatigue is really easy to come by when you listen to albums constantly over and over and over again and that's exactly what we're going to do throughout the entire week so stay tuned next week to find a review of dr acula and that's all we got for you guys today remember to like the video if you like it and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel i'm tv fish and i'll buy yourself we'll see you guys later